I'm in the Derbyshire village of Repton, which for me will always have connotations with that school over there. Because when I was a kid, I read about how Roald Dahl went there in his book Boy, and what a horrific time he had there. But actually I'm here today more to look at this. That's the gateway to the old abbey, which was founded by St. Mirbel. But next to it is the parish church. It's a beautiful medieval parish church. But, as we go inside, we'll find that it has a secret. We're inside the church now, which is dedicated to St. Wiston. Here's the altar. But if we go down the side, around here, we see something here, to the crypt. Let's have a look inside. This is the crypt of St. Winston's Church, Repton. It was lost for hundreds of years and then found again by accident when workmen were digging in the chancel. Repton was once upon a time the capital of Mercia, one of the greatest of the Saxon kingdoms, and this was the royal claim. This is where the kings of mercy were buried. It is a little piece of Anglo Saxon England preserved, hidden for centuries. Wow. St. Wiston was a Mercian prince. He was murdered in 1849, and we think. It was in a place called Wisdomstone, which means Wisdom's grave or Wisdom's place in, in Shropshire. And when he was murdered, um, it was said that a great light shone down from heaven to show people where the body was. And the body was then taken here and interned within this crypt. St. Wiston gives us as modern pilgrims a bit of a problem because he's one of those Saxon saints that we sit there and think well why were you a saint? because to be quite frank he never seemed to do any saintly things he was a, a prince and his uncle took over the throne and then he was murdered and we think it was because actually he had a claim to the throne so he was murdered um, for political reasons the fact is that the story, although it does give us problems, was not uncommon. In Hereford Cathedral, there's a very, very similar story about another Saxon saint. But he was regarded as a saint, and miracles were said to have taken place. And we have to see things in the context of that, in the context of those times. And... Um, Maybe it's that just thinking, it's the thinking about the murder for political reasons, the murder of a young and quite innocent boy by all accounts who did have a faith, and the fact that people's faith, people's belief caused them to come here and for miracles to take place. And I think that's what we, we need to think about rather than focusing on, you know, well, did he deserve it, was it political and all that kind of thing. Actually, as well, St. Wister was not the only saint associated with this place. Another one was Guthlac, and his story um, is also quite interesting in a different way, because he was a, a mercy nobleman, he was a warrior, and because of the horrors of battle, he, he gave it all up, he couldn't cope with it. And he, um, he became a monk here at Repton, so he would have known this place. It's probably the only place at Repton that he would have recognised, but he would have been here. But in the end, Repson wasn't wasn't enough for him, so he set off and became a hermit at Crowland in um, Lincolnshire. And I've already done a video 
for that when I went to Carlin Abbey and the, the reason I went there was because I had visited here and heard a Gothic story and thought that sounded interesting. They're just two of the stories at Repton. I mentioned another earlier, the famous author, Roald Dahl, went to the school there, uh, which he hated. And uh, he was beaten by the, the man who was the headmaster who would later become the Archbishop of Canterbury. So I think we see the church not always in a flattering light in Repton. But all those stories, there was a great battle just outside, that way, uh, by the river where the Vikings slew hundreds of Mercians and the place was effectively abandoned. St. Werberg, who I've talked about, written a book about, she actually founded the Abbey here. And I think, to me, that's what makes, that, that's what makes England such a remarkable country. Is everywhere you go in just a, what looks like a normal church, there's so many stuff going on. And we've got this tiny little village and it was once the capital of a kingdom. There were saints, there were soldiers, there were battles. There was famous authors, sadistic headmasters who later became archbishops. I think that's great, but for the visitor, I think this is the greatest thing of all because this is just such a special place and for a few square metres, you are back in Anglo-Saxon terms. Wow. God bless.